we have a lot of news today. Reverend William Barber is here. If you are just joining us, it was just late today that the Minnesota Attorney General announced these new murder charges elevated against the original officer at the center of the Floyd killing and new charges, three new murder charges for the other officers. Uh, as mentioned, Reverend William Barber is here. Uh, he does more than one thing. And uh, Reverend, it's good to have you back. I've talked to you about more than one thing. I'll mention to viewers that you are, of course, the co-chair of the Poor People's Campaign. You're a board member of the NAACP, and you have done work on organizing for many years in North Carolina. Uh, you were a leader of the movement known as Moral Mondays, uh, which gained national attention. And today you are writing about Trump's use of the Bible as an obscenity. And you say you recommend he should try reading the words inside it. Uh, let me begin, sir, given your work on the power of organizing. Do you think it is grassroots and street organizing that led to these murder charges today? I think it had a great um, part in it. I think the fact that we had it on tape, that that 17 year old girl was like David before Goliath. She would not move despite seeing one of the most grotesque things that any child could be exposed to. She stood there. I'm glad she did because we may not be at this place if we did not have it on tape. I think that part of what also garnered so much attention to this is the moment in which it ha happened. You know, there were a lot of wounds before COVID, of, you know, systemic racism, systemic poverty, ecological devastation before COVID, the lack of health care before COVID. Then COVID hits and the wounds are exposed and exploited by the pandemic. And then 100,000 people are dead and the ineptness of the president. And then you see a lynching on TV. I think mm. all of those things combined, let me ask you, combined, had an impact. Reverend, let me ask you about that. You, you just said it, and you are someone that we call upon that you think about these things, obviously, from a moral dimension, and you and you teach about God. And sometimes mm -hmm. in our discourse and in the media, you know, we, we shy away from that, and people have different beliefs. Uh, but when you think about that and God, what does it mean to you that we are living in a time of extreme death? This pandemic is all around us. Uh, it has not been an equal opportunity killer, but it has touched so many. And then within that, we see the killing, which Minnesota authorities now describe as a alleged charged murder. How do you see that interacting? Because we're dealing with this time of death, Reverend. Well, death can have, especially death in the movement, can have the potential of destroying you and making you doubt and go into utter despair, or death can spur you, like the death of Emmett Till spurred uh, Rosa Parks. It was the death of Swana Cheney and Goodman that made more people go south, not less. It was the death of four girls in a Birmingham church 17 days after the march on Washington, and then the death of a president that pushed people to do more. Sometimes what death does is it makes people say, wait a minute. Our systems are failing us. We may die, but we shouldn't die like this. And so we're going to resist the death. Like Claude McKay said in his book back in the Harlem Renaissance, if we must die, let us not die like hogs. And so what's happening is people are saying, this is not supposed to happen. The state is not supposed to kill you. The state is not supposed to keep you from having PPEs. The state is not supposed to take your health care. The state is not supposed to force you back to work in lethal situations like Trump did with meat packers. And certainly the state in your name is not supposed to murder somebody right in your face. Sometimes when de that kind of death happens, it actually brings people to life. It's almost mm. like a crucifixion and then there's a resurrection. I was reading a scripture in Amos um, that actually says, um, God says, I'm looking for the day when a remnant of people will go in the streets and shut down the malls and shut down the businesses and cry and wail until the nation pays attention. It's in Amos chapter 5 in the Message Bible. Some of that is what we're seeing in this moment. Hmm. Hmm. Thank you for that. Uh hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. You can see more of our videos right here, or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that.